Hello, Todd Lewis here again from Mainline Automotive Equipment. In this video we're going to talk about derived RPM, how to set it up, why we use it. So derived RPM is essentially just a, a term for a calculated engine RPM term. Uh, commonly used if you, say for example, can't hook up an actual tacker lead to a car, something like that. So on the hub dyno it's very, very important to actually to set up derived RPM. So to actually set it up, it's under the uh, setup menu here. You come down to engine vehicle, and you'll see the second one down here, engine RPM to hub RPM, or well, the shortcut is control S. So you click on that, and this little window pops up. So these are just the default Cal RPM and gear number that actually pops up on this window. You can change these to whatever you have to be, so you could go to 2000, RPM, if your third gear was a gear you're doing a test in, you can do that. We'll leave it at fourth. So what you would normally do now is, say, drive to 2000 RPM via the, the TACO in the vehicle. Or if you actually did have the TACO that can get up, you'd get a reading here. So you drive to 2000 RPM and click Set Drive to RPM. Now, because I don't have a vehicle running here or dummy data running, if I click Set Drive to RPM, I'm not going to get a number here. But basically, I just wanted to show you the dialog that pops up when you are setting up derived RPM. So I'll just click OK. Now, I'll cheat a bit here and I'll manually enter a known derived RPM figure. So to see what current derived RPM figure is sitting in the program, if we click on the header button in here, I'll just type it into here because we know this is the one for this particular car, 3.45 into the engine actual RPM number and click save. So there's a couple of things that that figure does as I've spoke to before on the entering vehicle details tab. It allows us, allows us to show a theoretical engine RPM on the dial screen for doing steady state tuning. So once again, a thousand actual RPM would be 3,450 engine RPM. So that's now set up. Now, one of the important reasons for setting up derived RPM is it was more so prevalent on older versions of software in the ramp test screen where a customer didn't enter the derived RPM value. The early versions of show program would show the peak horsepower and either torque or horsepower at an actual RPM number. So you might see the peak number showing 408 horsepower, but it's something like 1850. So that was confusing people for a while, so we, we got rid of it for a while, but we never in, reintroduced it again. So now you can actually show peak horsepower and torque at uh, engine RPM values. Now, you notice at the moment, at the top of the screen here, we've got 408 horsepower and 1,554 foot bounds. Now that can be confusing to some people and who they realise they're actually on the hub dyno, so that's the actual axle torque that's being displayed in this particular screen here. Uh, newer versions of software, which we class as we call it a beta version, but in this screen here now, you notice on the left hand side of the screen here it says torque and power, but under the setup options menu now in the ramp test screen, we can click on options, and we've got an option here now for show derived torque in ramp test. Click that on and go OK go OK. So now we've got a torque number that basically means something to people now. You'll notice here now we've got a torque curve on the screen and our power curve from a reference run. If I turn that back off again, go back to showing axle torque, you'll notice that there's no torque curve here, but if we change the scale up to this value here, that's the actual tor axle torque number here, way up here. So it makes a lot more sense to users to actually use derived torque. So that's why we've introduced it in this screen. So you can just scale it to whatever you need to here. So in order to calculate derived torque, you do have to sell the dyno program what RPM channel you're using to calculate it because the derived torque is a calculated figure. So we can do that in one of two ways. If I escape back to the dial screen, from this screen, we go set up options 
we go to the data tab and you see here it's got taco channel for calculations so there's a drop down dialog here i've got it set to derived rpm at the moment so we're using our derived rpm or our theoretical rpm to calculate drive torque drop down here on this version of dyno i've got option we've also got what's called taco hardware so they're like the taco leads you hook to the engine get a, a true engine rpm reference you may have two additional options also have what's called obd2 rpm or ecu rpm if you're getting canned data from an aftermarket ecu so i'd suggest leave it as derived rpm as a bit of a, a default fallback that way you'll always have a, a derived torque um, number and just in case you forget to hook the taco lead up or you get a, a bad taco signal it'll upset that number so leave it to derived rpm just to start off with you can always change it to taco after the event if you have to so if i go okay now it's now set up but if i had that turned off this is what it does to the so if i go off here what that'll do when we go to our ramp test screen once again there's no derived torque calculated and it also has a warning on this is later version software there's no tax signal so if you ever get a situation where you see zero derived torque it means you haven't told the software what taco source you're going to use to calculate derived torque or it's turned off so if i escape back to the dial screen again we'll turn it back on so we've got derived torque shown anywhere throughout the program so we'll go back to our ramp screen then from here for example if i go to our analyze screen in this screen here there's another separate setting where you notice here at the moment we've got our horsepower 406 at this point in time and once again you can see our our torque way up here at 1550 but you notice that's axle torque again and we can determine that by if you notice the word torque on the statistics of cursor window there's no little d next to the, the word torque so if we right click on the graph area and use derived torque you'll notice that there'll be a small d there designated next to the word torque and now we've got our torque curve on our screen down here and at the moment we're in horsepower and foot pounds and that's why they cross at 5252 so in this screen here we can also tell the program what rpm source to use to calculate the drive torque so a lot of the time we're in the screen here analyzing data so i can right click come down to taco options and this is where we can also change it to if i change it to taco hardware go okay now i've still got a drive torque figure here that means when i tested this car i, I had an engine rpm connected and a derived rpm so it's where to it. it's handy to have a you always have a backup so i'll change it to now on a manual car you, the, the, the drive torque will be very very similar between a t an engine taco signal and derived rpm on a manual car but if it's an automatic car an engine tax signal is a better option because you'll get a more truer reading because it's taking out the, the slip factor of the torque converter or whatever rpm you're at so that's why it's very important to set up drive rpm where you can because you can always use it as a figure to tell the software what channel to use for calculating derived torque so that's about it for this video and uh, we'll see you next time thanks